So now that we've covered the diverse amount of body plans that we see within the animal world, we're going to now move to a different side of the animal uniqueness story. Remember, our overarching question is what makes animals unique? What makes animals specifically the most advanced, the most organized organisms on planet Earth? Now, another key part of this organization is the developmental pattern that an animal undergoes. And we've touched upon development a little bit, but now we're going to go a little bit deeper in the idea of development by entitling this next flowchart, Developmental Modes 1. So there are specific modes, specific ways animals are going to develop, and they're going to actually be specific evolutionary events, key animal features that differentiate one animal from another. First and foremost, we have to first establish the two major types uh, of animals of development within one large class of animals. Okay, so there are actually two types within two types of developmental modes. That is within the larger class of bilateria. Now we talked about bilateral animals before. They were the bilaterally symmetric animals like you and I, but when you want to name bilateral animals in terms of taxonomy, in terms of classification, you call the entire group bilateria. That's the sort of Latin way of saying it. And within bilateria, there are two subclasses of developmental models that are uh, of use to us. And those are the, the animals that classify as protostomes and those that classify as deuterostomes. And we'll get into the meaning of these words in a later flowchart, but for right now, just understand that of the bilateral organisms, of the symmetrically, uh, you know, two-sided organisms like you and I, there are protostomes and there are deuterostomes. What do these each encompass? That's what we'll be going over in the next couple of uh, modes of development. So now that we have that established, we can now look at a different idea. Uh, a developmental mode specifically. And remember the term cleavage. We talked about cleavage in our, one of our earlier flowcharts when we established some terms. And just to remind you, cleavage would be that pizza idea, the idea that you have mitotic cell divisions without cell growth. Mitotic cell divisions without cell growth. And that's weird because most of the time you associate mitosis, mitotic divisions, with the cell growing, with, with the entire system getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But right now, what's happening is you're just having a series of cleavage events that are going to allow for this growing embryo to just have more cells. Okay, We're getting more and more cells without any larger cell growth, let's say. Now, um, before I go any further, it's good to mention that these developmental modes are well exemplified in figure 32.10, and that's something you should be looking at as we go through these developmental modes. Now, back to the cleavage side of the story. There are two types of cleavage patterns that protostomes undergo and deuterostomes undergo, respectively. So in the protostome side, which we'll do over here, protostomes are going to undergo cleavage mitotic cell divisions without cell growth. But the specific type of cleavage that they're going to undergo is called spiral cleavage. Spiral cleavage. So that's the key you have to remember. Protostomes, spiral cleavage. Okay. And in addition, deuterostomes will have their own version of this as well. And that will be over here, which will say deuterostomes equal to the type of cleavage that they undergo is called radial cleavage. Now, as a point of emphasis, do not confuse radial cleavage with radial symmetry. They are two completely separate things. Remember, the type of symmetry we're looking at right now is bilateria. And within bilateria, we have protostomes and deuterostomes. Protostomes undergo spiral cleavage. Deuterostomes undergo radial cleavage. They do not undergo radial symmetry. Why not? Because they're already classified as bilaterally symmetric organisms. More on that later. So what does spiral cleavage encompass? So the idea of spiral cleavage is the following. You're going to have planes of cell division, CD for cell division, that are diagonal. This is the idea of radial here, that are diagonal to the vertical axes of the embryo to the vertical axis of the embryo. 
And again, looking at this figure, you'll very easily be able to see the diagonal arrangement of the spiral cleavage. Major thing to remember, spiral cleavage means that you're going to have diagonal cell divisions. Now, the big part of spiral cleavage, of cleavage patterns in general, when we're looking at protosomes and deuterosomes, is the idea of determinant versus indeterminate. Protosomes undergo something known as determinant cleavage. This is a term to remember about the protostomes, and there's an opposite term to remember about the deuterostomes. So this is determinant cleavage. And I'll underline determinant because that's something we need to remember. This essentially means the following. Determinant sounds like determined, and that's exactly what we're looking at here. When you undergo a determinant cleavage pattern, you can state that the developmental fate, the eventual development, in other words, of this organism, of this protostome, which is a bilateral organism. This developmental fate, uh, specifically of each embryonic, meaning early cell within the life of this organism, which within each uh, embryonic cell is rigidly set, and this is the key here, so I'm going to capitalize this, rigidly set. It does not move out of this position. Rigidly set very early in development. Very early in development. Essentially what this means is the following. When you have the developmental fate of each embryonic cell being rigidly set very early in development, this means that if you were to hypothetically remove an embryonic cell from this growing protostomic embryo, so remove embryonic cell, the adult version of this, uh, of this protostome, as a result of this removal, will actually lack certain parts. The adult lacks key parts. The example that I always give is that if you have a growing protostome, and let's imagine this protostome is going to eventually have a leg upon birth. If the developmental fate of each cell, of the 8 to 12 cells that occupy a very early embryo, one of those 8 to 12 cells is taken out, imagine that cell was supposed to turn into the eventual leg of this protostome. Because protostomes undergo determinate cleavage, that cell was determined to be a leg very early in the development. Its fate was rigidly set very early in the development. Thus, if I took that cell out, if I removed that embryonic cell, the adult will lack the respective part, which would have been a leg. So that's our protostome determinant cleavage story. It's good to sort of now juxtapose this and compare it with the deuterostome side of the cleavage story. So first, we're going to go undergo and figure out what, what radial means in terms of diagonal versus shape. So in deuterostomes, we'll get this out of the way first, and then we'll get to the determinant side. Here we have planes of cell division, just like we did in protostomes, but this is the difference, um, that are parallel or parallel or perpendicular. So there's our difference right here, and this is what you should remember. Parallel, perpendicular, whenever you think of radial cleavage and deuterostomes, just remember parallel or perpendicular. In protosomes, spiral cleavage, just remember diagonal cell division. So we have parallel or perpendicular cell division to the vertical axis of the embryo. So that's sort of a, an extra part to remember the vertical axis of the embryo. That's really there for you to, uh, to help some people at least visualize it. I think figure 32.10 will definitely emphasize that a little bit better than the writing can. Now, the big part of deuterostomes to remember is this idea of determinant versus indeterminant. And deuterostomes actually undergo indeterminate cleavage. Undergo indeterminant. So this is without determinants. Indeterminant cleavage. So their mitotic cell divisions without cell growth are indeterminate. That's how you would describe them. And they are also parallel or perpendicular. Now, what does indeterminate really mean? We can broadly define this as the following. Each cell produced during early cleavage, each cell produced during early cleavage, so really, really early in the development of this organism we're speaking of. Right now we're talking zygote, then four cells, then eight cells, very early. Each cell produced during early cleavage is going to retain, 
is going to retain. That's the keyword here. In our other determinant side, it was rigidly. That was a keyword. Here is the idea of retaining its capacity. Every cell retains its capacity, its ability, in other words, to develop into complete embryo. To develop into a complete embryo. This is a quite different story than our determinant cleavage pattern. Essentially what's happening here is that if I did the same exact thing that I did in the protosome side where I removed one cell and I removed one cell from the indeterminate side, that one cell that I removed, because each cell can retain its capacity to develop into a complete embryo, if I put that one cell that I removed on the deuterostome side and put it into a condition where cell can grow, that cell will actually grow into a complete embryo on its own. Again, it's a hypothetical situation, but it shows the extreme difference between the determinant cleavage and indeterminate cleavage. Furthermore, on the indeterminate cleavage side, it can be stated that if I removed that cell, not only can that cell turn into a complete embryo, but wherever I removed that cell from, over here, when I removed the cell, that adult would lack the part. Over here, actually, the other cells compensate for the loss. They actually know that a cell was removed, and they will compensate for the fact that that cell was supposed to eventually be some sort of leg cell and it will compensate for that. And thus, this is a very powerful form of cleavage. The type that we undergo as humans is on the deuterosome side. We are radially um, cell-dividing organisms that are going to undergo indeterminate cleavage. A lot of relevance to this idea because of the idea of stem cell research. Big, big part of that is the idea of indeterminate nature of stem cells. Uh, and that's why there's a lot of focus on that research today. So that covers our first idea of developmental modes. The mode that we're focusing on here is whether cleavage is spiral or radial, both of which have a subsequent uh, results in terms of diagonal and determinant on the spiral side and in terms of parallel perpendicular and the indeterminate nature on the radial side.